Hello, everybody. Welcome to OCN once again. We're glad to have you tuned in because today we're going to be speaking about the authority of the believer. That's right. It's spelled out very clearly in the scripture, but many believers, many Christians don't understand or know their authority in Christ. So we're going to go into that. First of all, I'd like you to look at the scripture in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, where God was speaking about mankind. Genesis 1, verse 28 says, and God said, let us make man in our image. He's talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, the key word in all that is dominion. Dominion means control. So that's how God created man, with control. That's right. Now look over in Psalm 8, verse 5, real quickly. This will just validate that. Psalm 8, verse 5, the Word of God says, <clears throat> speaking about man, for you have made him, a, that, that is man, a little lower than, your Bible says the angels, but the Hebrew Bible says Elohim. Now Elohim is the word for God which was used in the early part of the Hebrew history. Elohim. It means God. And it's a plurality with the ending I am. Elohim. God, one, three persons in one God. So you have made him a little lower than Elohim. He made man a little lower than God, in other words, and has crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet. Now, folks, I want to remind you, the angels are the works of God's hands as well. That's right. So man has been placed higher originally in creation than the angels. Because God wanted a family. He wanted a family of people like himself. That's right. The angels are not like God, exactly. But God said, let's make man in our image and, that, and let him have dominion. The angels do not have dominion. God has dominion. So anyway, that's how God created man. That is the start. And then, of course, you know what happened. Shortly afterwards, the fall took place in the Garden of Eden. And let's refer over here to Luke 4, verse 6. Luke 4, verse 6. <clears throat> Jesus was, was being attempted here by Satan. And uh, I know I'm skipping over a lot of centuries of the history, but I want you to get the key point here. It is Luke 4, verse 6. Satan is speaking. <clears throat> And the devil said unto him, that is to, to Jesus, All this authority will I give you, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. You say, wait a minute. Who delivered it to him? It was man who gave it to him at the fall. After man sinned against God, he delivered the authority which he had to the angels. And he was placed, mankind was placed under the angels. They Now the angels, Satan being one of them, a cherub, has authority over man. It didn't stay that way, however. Thank God for that. After centuries even thousands of years of recorded history, God sent Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, into a human body. God made a body for him. The Holy Spirit birthed, put the seed of God in the woman called Mary. And in nine months, she gave birth to the Messiah. 
Jesus, he was called because he should save his people from their sins. And so God brought himself, basically, in a body to the earth. And when he was on the earth, he was the second man with authority. Adam was the first one, Adam and Eve. Mankind is no distinction there between genders, man and woman. And so mankind failed, turned that authority over to Satan, the devil. And when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus was the second representative man. He represents mankind. As Adam and Eve were representatives of the first creation, the old creation, I call it, Jesus is a representative of the new creation, a representative man. And so, Satan was not wrong when he said to Jesus in the mountain of temptation, all this authority has been given to me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Notice, Jesus didn't argue. That's right. But then, Jesus kept the law perfectly in every jot and tittle. He kept the law and the word of God. Then it came time for him to sacrifice himself on the cross for mankind that had been corrupted by sin. And he sacrificed himself on the cross. You know the story very well. But I want you to notice that over in Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, is the Great Commission, it's called. And there, there is a change in authority. You'll notice this. Satan has authority over man up until the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And over in Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, Jesus came and spoke unto them, this is after he rose from the dead, speaking to the disciples, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now that's greater than what Adam had. Adam had all authority on earth. Jesus was given all authority in heaven and on earth as a representative man. Then he said, in verse 19, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Now what did Jesus command them? If his disciples were supposed to teach all nations, whatsoever he commanded them. Well, look over in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. That is a key verse here in the scripture. Matthew 10, verse 8. The scripture speaks about Jesus commissioning his disciples. <clears throat> he said, and this is a command that he gave them, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. And when Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus became the new firstborn of the new creation from the dead. That's what Colossians 1 speaks about. And Colossians 2. He is the firstborn from the dead. Never to die again. Never to die again. The ones that Jesus had raised from the dead, there were three times when he was on the earth, died again. But Jesus, once he was raised from the grave, never died again. He's alive. I spoke to him this morning, and he answered me. That's right. He's living. He's the only true God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So... He received all authority in heaven and on earth, according to the scripture I just read you, Matthew 28, 18. Then those that he 
that commit their lives to Jesus, accept him as Lord and Savior, are his disciples. That isn't just the original 12 disciples. It is all who commit themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. All who accept him and his sacrifice for their sins. They are born again, or born from above, or born spiritually, not physically, spiritually. The second creation is a spiritual creation. That's right, a spiritual one. And it has more power than the first creation. The new man in Christ Jesus can do everything Jesus did. In fact, he told them that over in John chapter 14, verse 12. It's very clear. Now, I know this was before the cross, but Jesus gave them power before the cross as well. John 14, and Jesus is speaking to the disciples here. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. The greater works involve the new creation man. Jesus did tremendous works when he was on the earth. Tremendous. He walked on the water. He healed the sick. He raised the dead three times. He, he did great works cured the blind, the lame, the deaf, the dumb, cast out demons. He said, all those works you can do, and greater works than these shall you do. Why? Because greater works belong to the new creation man. Jesus was not yet raised from the dead as the new creation man. But when he was, he received all authority in heaven and on earth. And then he gave that to his disciples who received him as Lord and Savior. That is the new creation, folks. It's a spiritual creation. It has tremendous power. Let's look again here. So let me just uh, encapsulize it here for you for a moment. At, at the first creation, the old creation, God was the highest authority figure. And then came man, and then came angels, and then came the animals, and then came the plants and other things, the soil and so forth, because God made everything alive. All things living. That's right. According to 1 Timothy 6, 13, God made everything alive. Then came the fall, and mankind fell and turned over man's authority to the devil. According to Luke 4, verse 6, then the authority line ran like this. God, angels, man under the angels, animals and plants, like that. That's the old creation. Then when Jesus rose from the dead, the first new creation man, and then he put his blood on the mercy seat in heaven and God accepted it, then Jesus gave his authority to all those who trust him and commit their lives to him. Then it became, once again, the original, the restoration of the original order of authority. God, man, angels, animals, plants, like that. Now you can see that if you're unequally yoked with an unbeliever, for instance, you, you, God doesn't tell us to never have any ties with unbelievers. God tells us don't accept their culture. Don't do what they do. If you work for a person, your supervisor happens to be an unbeliever, it's okay. Just don't accept his lifestyle. Don't do what he does. You can be subject to him and work and the authority that he has uh, over a certain thing like engineering or anything else like that, that's fine. But when it comes to lifestyle, accepting his lifestyle, no. We draw the line there. We draw the line because we don't want a new creation man 
subject to the lifestyle of the old creation man. That's no good. Because the old creation is under the angels and not under man. The new creation is subjected to man. So we have to draw that distinction clearly. And you see also, that's why the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now that doesn't only pertain to marriage. It pertains to business dealings. Be very careful what you do with unbelievers. All right. Let's go on. I want to bring some more scriptures out here. Over in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, <clears throat> Jesus gave his disciples power and authority. In fact, I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about the word authority. Luke 10, verse 19. <clears throat> uh, let's, let's start, actually, with verse 17. He had just sent out 70, and they came back rejoicing. Verse 17 says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now what Jesus said in the Greek language is, I give you authority. Exousia, that's authority. Authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now, this isn't just physical, folks. This is spiritual as well. Yes, it's physical. It's also spiritual. The serpents and scorpions are referring to demons and fallen angels. That's right. And Satan is called that old serpent, the devil. And so... We have authority over him and over all his underlings. All of them. We have authority over them in the name of Jesus. And he says, and over all the power, dunamis, of the enemy. Power, dunamis, dynamite. You see, there's a distinction there. There's authority on the one hand and power on, on the other hand. And let me just... Um, give you an example of that. The policeman on the street, his badge is his authority, and we all obey that authority. But if we don't obey, he has the gun over here, and that's his power. So the badge and the gun, Jesus gave both unto us when he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. And over all the power of the enemy. And then he said a very important thing, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means that when you minister to others in the name of Jesus, and your life is clean itself, you don't have to fear Satan retaliating against you. You don't have to fear his attacks because his power has been broken. That's right. It's wonderful to know that we are safe when we do ministry. But we have a, a warning, make sure that sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven before we do any ministry. Make sure that we repent of sin. We repent of things that we've done. We repent even of uh, you know, what we would call little things, little sins. Maybe uh, a bad word or two slips out or or argument with your wife or something like that, you know. To us, it's, it's, it may seem small, but not to God. We repent if we've said things that have hurt other people. And so we repent of our works, ask God to forgive us, and then we can go and minister to others, and we don't have to fear the enemy getting on us or invading us. No way. We are holy, unblameable, unreprovable, as Colossians 1, verse 22 says, if we haven't moved away from the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? The hope of the gospel is the resurrection of the body and Jesus in us, the hope of glory. Yay! <laughs> he's, he's wonderful. Now, we know from the Word of God 
that the Christian has Jesus in him. That's right. But we don't yet have the resurrection of our body. And that's the blessed hope that the Gospels and the epistles of Paul are speaking about. That blessed hope is the resurrection of our body. If we aren't moved away from that, we are holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in God's eyes, according to Colossians 1.22. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so we can do the works of Jesus and the greater works because we are multiplied and technology has multiplied mightily. Jesus never had a television to preach over. He never had even radio. He had to get together with a big group of people and speak to them. We can speak over TV. We can speak over radio. We can speak over our cell phones and preach over our cell phones from the very confines of our houses. We can put programs on Facebook. We can put them on YouTube. It's amazing what technology has done. And God did all this in order for his word to go forth into the nations with power. But now, Christians seem to have lost the acknowledgement of their authority. That's why I'm speaking this day about recovering it. You must recover that authority. Recognize you already have it. You don't have to do anything to attain it. You just have to acknowledge it. And realize, you don't have to fear the enemy getting all over you. No, you have to use your authority. The Bible is a wonderful book. You must read it in order to understand who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the new creation. We are what's called the God-man. This is not new age. It's, it's actual Christianity. That's right. It's power from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have his power and his anointing, depending upon the faith which we exercise to use it. We have plenty of evidence from the scripture that we can do those things. We just have to go do them. Our faith has to grow. Well, how does our faith grow? It grows according to Romans 10, verse 17. It says, now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, the, <clears throat> the word of God there is not the logos. This printed book is the logos, the law, right? It's printed, but the authority comes from the rhema of God. Rhema meaning the Spirit quickened the Word. As you're reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit quickens passages of the Bible to you and makes them yours forever. Yes, that's right. Quickens it to you, and you are anointed with that passage in the Word, and you'll never forget it. It'll constantly be before your eyes. That's right. And you'll know you can do what Jesus has asked you to do. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to show you uh, Matthew 18, verse 18. Let's turn to that. Matthew 18, verse 18. Jesus is speaking there to the disciples, and he's showing them what they can do in prayer when they bind things or loose things. Matthew 18, 18, Jesus speaking. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That is a powerful scripture. You can bind and loose with the power of heaven behind you now, we are not talking about power over people. We're talking about power over what drives people, the devil and his dominion. 
Here's angels. Here's demons. They drive people. They put thoughts into their hearts and into their minds and make them act uh, the opposite from a Christian. They drive them to do evil works. Now, we have power over them. Not over the people. Over those spirits. And we can bind those spirits. Keep them from talking to the object, like a man or a woman or a child. We can command them, you may not speak to this person anymore in Jesus' name. We can also drive them out of that person, but the person has to agree. The person has to want to be free. The person has to first recognize that he's not free, and then want the deliverance, and then we can do it in quickly. It doesn't have to take hours and hours. We can do it quickly. Command it in the name of Jesus according to the word of God, and it shall be done. Just like that. And so, we can do some great things in Jesus' name. <clears throat> now, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20 says, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now, an ambassador has power. He has power of the, of the country that sent him. We are from the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the country which sent us. Amen. It placed us here on this earth to do a job for the king yes. of kings, yes. Jesus Christ. Because we have that power and authority, we can do whatever he has asked us to do. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Ephesians, um, uh, turn over for a moment, please, to Ephesians. We'll close with that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. <clears throat> Let's start with verse 5. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. Even when we were dead in sins, has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved, verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are seated in heavenly places with Jesus at his right at, at, no, inside him at the right hand of the Father. That's the place of authority in the whole universe. We can do what he asks us to do. And everything is under our feet because we're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, go and do what the Lord has asked you to do. Don't be ashamed of it. Be bold. Use the boldness of the Word of God and act on it and do healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. That's right. Cleansing the lepers, all that stuff. You can do even greater things than that in the name of Jesus. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Go and do what you have heard me speak. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So be it.